Today is December 22nd, and our reading comes from Numbers chapter 24, verse 17a. What I saw in my vision hasn't happened yet, but someday a king of Israel will appear like a star. And from Ann Voskamp's book, Unwrapping the Greatest Gift, our reading comes from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 7. And it says in scripture, the Lord kept his word and did for Sarah exactly what he had promised. She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. This happened at just the time God had said that it would. And Abraham named their son Isaac. Eight days after Isaac was born, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. And Sarah declared, God has brought me laughter. All who hear about this will laugh at me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a baby? Yet I have given Abraham a son in his old age. And the story goes like this. One, two, three, four, five. Try counting all the way up to 99. That's how old white-haired Abraham was when he stood underneath all those millions of stars and tried counting them all. One, two, three, four, five. My, oh my. Standing there underneath thousands and millions of blinking stars, Abraham had one question when God said he would give Abraham thousands and millions of children as many as the stars in the sky. How? Abraham and his wife didn't have even one kid, so they didn't have even one grandchild. They only had one worn out prayer that God would give them just one miracle child of their own to hold and to laugh with and to love forever. But wait, who births the stars with every breath of his mouth? God does. If God births stars, couldn't he make one old man and one old woman birth one little baby? Couldn't God grow a family into a love big enough to fill the skies? Abraham, God said, everything is always more than it seems, more than you can see. I am doing unexpected things. I am sending you a child. And through that child, your family will grow big and the whole earth will be blessed. Abraham laughed happy. And when the news of the miracle child reached the ears of his wife, Sarah, she laughed too. But Sarah laughed sad. Sarah laughed the way you do when you think that someone is teasing you. And you laugh brave so you don't cry hard. Sometimes you use laughter like a shield to protect your heart. Could Sarah let down her guard and believe that God would be gentle with her dream to hold a child of her own? Sometimes when your heart hurts, your head hurts to believe. Many months went by. The stars came out every night. Sometimes Abraham and Sarah went down to the hillside and tried to count them all. Abraham's 100th birthday passed. Can you imagine trying to blow out all those candles? And then... When Abraham was 100 years old, Sarah had a baby, a baby boy. Abraham leaned and close over the baby. His forehead gently touches Sarah's. Isaac, Abraham smiled. Isaac means laughter. They would laugh with him and love him forever. Sarah held little Isaac and laughed with joy in the heavens. God has brought me laughter. Her wrinkles and weariness melted away as her lips cradled her smile. Her arms cradled her child. God brings us the gift of laughter, like bubbly, fizzy soda pop joy for our hearts. Joy is a gigantic secret gift that God gives us, and we never stop unwrapping. We were once all alone, but now we have been given a child, the many, many, many great grandson of Abraham the baby Jesus. And Jesus makes us laugh because he's coming to save us and free us from all of our fears. All fear comes from thinking that somewhere God's love will end. But God's unbeatable, unstoppable, unwrappable love for you will never end, no matter what. 
so we can loosen up because all our heavy, sad chains have been loosened and we can laugh free. Because of Jesus, the other miracle child who came to us, laughter comes to us too. And we get to hold the wonder of it close to us. Sadness is not the end of the story. Jesus is the end of the story and the beginning of our story and the best part of our story. Amen.